speech. First Amendment protects material, presumptively. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank number 27. My guest today is Mr. Joe Rogan. He, um, he and I went to... Is that the right grammar? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we went to Washington, D.C. together to... Uh, well, he was hosting a UFC, and I was um, watching a UFC... And uh, we did a comedy show the night before at the Verizon. I don't know what I don't know where it was, but um, on the way back, we decided to record a podcast while we we're in the plane, so we could uh, piss off the other first class passengers. It was really great. Um, so, as usual with Joe, I have a tough time corralling him into a single topic. Um, but we did for a little while. We talked about, um, I guess, mostly we talked about comedy, but uh, we talked about censorship and in general what that means. And then it just kind of uh, just meandered to a regular conversation. But it was still fun. So uh, sit back, everybody. Uh, relax and enjoy Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank number 27. Let's call it let's call it censorship with Mr. Joe Rogan. You can't stand to see a brother get as rich as you. This is the 90s and we're coming on strong, saying things and doing things that you're saying is wrong. Wise enough, because on election day, we'll see who's banned in the USA. Welcome to the Skeptic Tank, Ari Shapir Skeptic Tank. Uh, I'm here on an airplane on a DCA. I'm making that up. I don't know what kind of plane it is. I think it's a 737. Oh, a 737 from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles, California with my friend and uh, and colleague, Mr. Joe Rogan. Hello, Ari. How are you? Podcast on a plane. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's so easy. It's way better than the way oh. I've been doing it, or we did it before with an iPhone. We're, it sounds kind of funky. And we're almost kissing. We're going to be so a close to bit. it. A little bit. I didn't want to bring that up. <laughs> Not that would have been bad, but you know, whatever. We just we just didn't want to right then. Um, we're gonna try to go. <laughs> you hate doing topics. <laughs> so, I don't care. We so, can do a topic. Well, let's, um, well, let's just talk about this in general. The censorship in general. Just the idea of somebody fucking telling you what to do or what not to do. I hate it. I don't know if you do. Of course. You know, yeah. if you're a comic, the only way you become a comic is somewhere along the line you said something you shouldn't have said, and somebody laughed. You know, and yeah. that's what it's all about. I mean, the ninety percent more of what you say on stage and what I say on stage, there's many, 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 many places where it's absolutely inappropriate, and people would be upset at you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, could you imagine if yeah. you were ever in some formal meeting about anything important, and you told the exploding vagina sh- story? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you said, "Well, I like women when they're twenty because their vaginas are awesome." You know, I mean, like people would fucking people freak like, out. That's just not funny. I'm like, yeah. well, not in the right context. Yeah, you're like, well, you're wrong because I've got a <laughs> recording here. That was the first time actually I remembered not doing well with a joke and and having this freedom. It was this anorexic joke. I was, it was my first... I wrote it in college, actually. I did it before I was a stand-up. And I brought it in. But I was like, how do you kill an anorexic person? If you tell her, like, hey, if you lost, like, five more pounds, you'd be beautiful. <laughs> um, and somebody... I was in the belly room with, like, five people one day. And the joke got laughs. It consistently got laughs. You know, I was happy with it. And then somebody was, didn't get laughs that night. And this girl was like, that's just not funny. And I'm like, well, I mean, I know from observation that you're just wrong. <laughs> but I agree with you, baby. No one laughed today. So yeah. something I did was off. But the joke is untouchable. My delivery might have been off, or this crowd might have been off. But that joke is beyond reproach. By the way, the captain is just talking. This is the worst sound system oh, ever yeah. we couldn't for communicating. He could be telling us there's UFOs out the side <laughs> of the building. If you, if you look on your left side, you'll see yeah. a, a, a flying object. They waved at us. They're looking at us right now. The uh, stewardesses are looking at us like maybe we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing. They're deciding? Yeah, they're trying to decide. Yeah, well, it's, you know, when someone says that it's not funny, they are right. It's not funny to them. To them. You know, I mean, it's yeah. not funny. And sometimes it's just not funny at that moment. And even you're not laughing because you've heard it a hundred times, so you know it's coming. And yeah. these five people, you know, they're sensitive. They're right. At that moment, it's not funny. But shit, man, that doesn't mean anything. There are times, I, I remember in my acting class, where I'll see some scene or something, and it just strikes me right, and I just start laughing, because right. they do it well, you know, yeah. they're, they're leading the moment, and I just, I'm like, oh, I see this moment, that guy, that girl's tooling that guy around, yeah. and I'll just laugh, and people are like, what are you laughing? I'm like, I don't know, it's well, funny. you know, I, I took my oldest daughter to um, uh, Twilight, you know, she's into the Twilight movies. Oh, really? And, uh, nice. And 
it was so uh, I don't know which one it was the second one or I think it was the second one and it was fucking horrendous there was some horrendous scenes in there where I was <laughs> biting <laughs> but laughing and biting my hand and then I start goofing on them well to her it wasn't funny at all to me it was hilarious Jacob just lost his love um, dad yeah. I was like oh Christ. that's not cool <laughs> no he didn't just say that get out of there you sparkly freak you know I'm like I always hated the, the idea of Twilight because I'm like it's it's vampires versus werewolves oh. and it's some love story. And by the way, no one dies. No one dies. No one dies. And I they're mean, fighting over a six. Yeah, people die like sort of peripherally on the news. They heard someone got None killed. None of the main characters die. No, you don't see anybody die. It's terrible. The werewolves are. Do they say they're going to kill each other at least? We- yeah, yeah, they threaten, they gnash teeth, they look at each other, but it's like really a girl's version, a young girl's version of school. what werewolves they might, they... and vampires. Right. They're attracted to these blood-sucking freaks that live forever, you know? And in high school, if some, if some guy was mad, they'd, they'd beat you up, but that'd be the worst of it. they go, oh, you want some? You want some? Well, it's also kind of cool. Rebecca? He can protect you because he's a werewolf or a vampire. People you know? call that female porn. <laughs> My ex girlfriend Ashley used to call that female it porn. It is. It is. There's something. I mean, uh, haven't you ever been to uh, the bookstore and you see those books that you go, who the fuck are these for? Mm-hmm. Those with the guy Fantasy with the book. long hair, Fabio looking hair. In the wind. Yeah, with his chest hair. She broken yeah. open. Yeah, the, yeah. This tan of the beach. And there's a girl who's just longingly looking at him like, <laughs> who the, who, who's, who's that novel for? Well, it's who a woman it who needs love in her life, and she's not getting it. They need, women need a certain amount of romance. You know, it sounds gross, but they want to be courted because they want to know that their eggs are special. They want to know that wow. their, their, their genetics are special. So they want someone who adores them. <laughs> so it appeals to them. See, women aren't just ha- I mean, I shouldn't say women in general, but a lot of women aren't happy with just someone who really loves them and cares for them. They want to be adored. They want to be worshipped. Yeah. Yeah. They really do. And it's because of their eggs. They want this is a fight for the eggs. It's a so genetic people read battle. Those and they read about somebody crossing an ocean and, and getting yeah. off the ship and go, Maria. Take me in your arms. They see that and they're just like, oh, it's time to touch that clip. Yeah, it's, it's time perfect. to. Perfect. Yes. Diggy, 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 diggy. <laughs> yeah, they love it. It's funny, man. It's just, they have a completely different set of ideals than us, which is why th- those type of women could never understand hand jobs, could never understand <laughs> going to a place and just getting jerked <laughs> off, you know? Or being Back on alley a date. A dumpster yeah, and a girl doesn't want to have sex. And you're like, oh, God, will you just touch it with your hand? No, I won't touch it with my hand. This is not like my books. <laughs> this is not like the man they with never, the... never, in the books, they never say, just, touch, just kiss yeah. it, kiss it. Yeah. The, just that touch guy, it with your hand. That guy never says, just let me titty fuck you. <laughs> the guy with the flowing locks never just tries to titty fuck you. We knew a, we knew a baseball player. Peripherally, we knew him like a little bit. And um, I mentioned him that he got us on the field at... at, at um, Dodger Stadium once. Like, Did he what? They field? got us on the field. Like, okay. After the game, we walked yeah. down there. It's kind of cool. And I mentioned it to my friend, Avi, and he's like, I know that name from somewhere. I'm like, oh, he's a Major League Baseball player. He goes, no. Oh, I know what it is. He um, he was hooking up with a friend of mine and said, I'm married, so I can't fuck you, but I could just come on your tits. He said, I'm married, I can't fuck you, but I'll just come on your tits? Yeah, that was his answer. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah, and she went for it. She went for it? Yeah. Did they make out? Or did yeah, they... they kissed a little while, I guess. Oh, okay. It wasn't he, there, so I'm just He just guessing. beat one off on her tits. Yeah, it's like, you know, this isn't cheating. Pretty hot. I guess it's sort of cheating, though. Sort of. Because you wouldn't do it if your wife was there. No. That's why I think all those things are cheating. Yeah, you got to think about that. It's you got to like, think about that. And then, again, like we were discussing uh, yesterday, when something like that happens, then you got some crazy freak who has some story about you. Oh, yeah. You know, you're a major league baseball that player. Person, yeah. That person who was willing to fuck you after you met them. Yeah. You're trusting them to be cool. Yeah, and not talk about it. Or yeah. talk about it, and hopefully, in a small circle, Just tell a it doesn't get back around to your mom or your wife. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, somebody's running a podcast where they know about it years later and wah, doesn't mention wah, the guy's wah. name. Well, lucky you're a nice guy because yeah. you were some douchebag podcast fellow. Or semi thoughtful. You know, yeah. by the way, just talking about people telling you what not to do and stuff. I remember one of the, the first things. It really helped me with stand-up. It was in Rhode Island. You remember that trip we took? We did Boston. Either, either it was the Wilbur or it was the old Comedy Connection. Okay, and yeah. And then we drove and did two, two road gigs. We did Chicopee. Yeah. yeah. Which is one of the worst places Terrible. of all time. If you ever, if you live there, k- kill yourself. I don't, I don't oh, advise this for place. many people, but kill yourself. Some old lady showed us her boobs. Yeah. Remember that? As oh. we were driving away, it was so gross. 
Whoa. and like, and she she's probably like forty eight, and she goes, "You want to see my tits, don't you?" And we we're like, uh. "No, ma'am, no, we don't." Tate was there too, I think. Uh. We're like, "We definitely don't." She goes, "Here you go," and they were like, "Sag." They were monstrous. Yeah, and then we went to Rhode Island. But right? we were in Rhode Island. This is what it was. We were, we were getting out of the car and walking to this like tent, this giant tent, and it was like a five minute walk. And uh, this guy who runs it says, he was saying, "Oh, thank you very, very much for coming," and we we're just briskly walking towards it. And uh, he was mentioning stuff, and you weren't really paying attention. And he goes, you know, and it's kind of an older crowd, so if you want to, like, tone it down a little bit, and, and you, without breaking stride or even barely looking at him, you just go, no, and just keep walking. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh, you can do that? You can not even take it into account at all? Yes. At and that I point, cleaned it up a little bit. I was off. I got scared. Well, at that point, you know, uh, it was already my crowd. Oh, you know, yeah. when, I, when I first started doing stand-up, I, I would have probably gotten scared and tried to clean it up a little, but... After you've been doing stand-up for a certain amount of years, you got to assume that the majority of the people that are coming to the show are coming to see you yeah. because they like what you do. So if they like what you do, that's what you got to give them. Yeah. You know, if I toned it down for the t- 10 or 20 people that hadn't seen me and would have been offended, that would have wrecked it for the, you know, 390 yeah, and, 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 others. Yeah. And why would you... Why would you make changes for those few people who aren't going to yeah. like you? Yeah, fuck them. Either, either they go along with it. I know that if you bring them the real shit, if there's, say if there's 400 people there and there's going to be 10 that are going to be ruthlessly offended, brutally offended, those those 10, you know, they're not there for you, man. Also, if you tone it down, they'll be mildly offended. Yeah. You can't really tone it down enough. Yeah. I mean, how much can, especially with our acts, yeah. you know, with your act or my act, our acts are fucking offensive. <laughs> you know, people like, when yeah. people ask me, like, can you do a clean gig? I'm always like, oh, no, I can yeah. recommend people for you. I just can't do it. I always say. But they're like, can you clean it up a little? I'm like, show me where. Show me where. Yeah, I'll give it to you on paper and you yeah. can bring it back show to me. Show me where this blowjob bit yeah. can, can be cleaner. Well, I went through something like that with Comedy Central before I ever did a, a special on there. Really? Where I tra- yeah, we were talking about me trying to. We completely gave up. Yeah, because they were just, it was ridiculous, you know, when you try to tone it down for TV. Yeah. And eventually what I wound up doing is doing an uncensored set, and then what they did is Spike TV aired it late at night, uncensored, and then they beeped it out earlier in the night, and then Comedy Central did the exact same thing. Yeah. They just accepted Brennan it. Renazisi and I were talking about this. He was like, should I go Comedy Central or Showtime for a special? And I'm like, dude, your act is not that far off from Comedy Central. Yeah, dude, I agree. A lot of your fucks are, I fucking went to the store, which aren't necessary at all. It's like... And a couple bits, yeah, you leave those out of the special because more people will see it on Comedy Central. Yeah, and those get beeped out without a problem anyway. Yeah. It's the, those kind of fuckings are no problem. The you know the fuck stories are the real yeah, yeah. problems. You know how much or, how much um, how much TV have you done? Was that always a problem for you? It's always a problem. Yeah. Well, the good thing is that I was fairly prolific, so I always had a certain amount of material just sort of uh, accidentally that was clean. Yeah. And it was just how to piece all that accidentally yeah. clean material together. But it was all sexual or it had innuendo. Do, I'm sure you could do it. Like if it was like five to seven. Oh, yeah. You could probably pick a bit that was like, all right, that one I can do. I could probably do an hour clean if I wanted to, but, I mean, why would I do that? Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> I think the idea behind it is dumb. And when I was coming up, it was really worshipped. It was like everybody wanted to do the Tonight Show. Because yeah. that's what happened with when I when I was starting out in Boston. What happened with Stephen Wright? Was Stephen Wright got on TV? He got on the Tonight Show. Was he a big Boston guy? Yeah. And so he, he got yeah. on that, and then that propelled him into superstardom. And then he did HBO and all this different stuff. But everybody was like, "You got to be clean. When like, you're okay, clean, you gotta, can make it." We got to you know, do this. Yeah. So th- that was th- what everybody wanted. Everybody wanted clean material, and I never understood that because it was like my favorite comedians were Pryor and yeah. Dice Clay and Kinnison but everyone was telling you you can't be those guys I was like well so at one point in time they had to be those guys and they yeah. were like well you have to be something different first and then once you become a successful comedian then you can become those guys I'm like well that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life and then for, somewhere along the line I realized I was taking advice from people who were mildly successful on a regional basis yeah. and we're never going to really make it in the world of stand-up comedy. The real national world. They, they didn't have it. a unique voice. And you sort of like, oh, you're ahead of me, but you're not where I want to be. Yeah, you're, you're ahead of me, but you're faking the funk. You're, you're yeah. not really even telling people what you're thinking. You're, you're saying what you think they want to hear. They're ahead of you the way a shoe salesman is ahead of you before you get your first job. Yes. You're like, yeah. all right, you're yeah. ahead, but I'll never want to be that. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was so much, so much talk of clean it up clean this up clean Dice that told me up. this once when, I, when he was like so what do you want to do he took me aside one day in the kitchen of the comedy store I'm like you know stand up he goes well what, what's your goal 
I mean, you want to do like theaters or clubs or what do you want to do? It's like, I want to sell out clubs. That, that'd be my goal. He goes, and that's it? He goes, I mean, I can't sell, I can't do like stadiums like you did. And he just goes, huh, why? And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, you just can't. <laughs> he was like, but why? And I'm like, I don't know, because that's very rare. He goes, meh, you can. Yeah, he's right. It. He's right. You can. I mean, it might not ever happen, but you can. Anyone. Yeah, anyone yeah. can. What is that? It's like if 100 people like you or 1,000 people like you, you could see 1,000 people liking you after last night. Yeah. Like, think of the, the gig we did. We did 1,600 people in D.C. You There's killed. So many. You killed in front of 1,600 people. So you could see those 1,600 people returning and seeing you, couldn't you? You could see some of them, definitely. Yeah, why not? So if 1,000. The, the more you do that, the yeah. more it would get, yeah. So if, a, if you could see 1,000 people coming to see you that enjoyed you, and they said, oh, Ari Shafir's back. We loved him when he was here with Joe Rogan. Let's go see him again. Why not 10,000? Yeah. Why not 20,000? Really, it's across the whole country, you can easily have 20,000. It's a matter of 20,000 being aware of you in Detroit, 20,000 being aware of you in Philadelphia to fill a, a place. And the, the crazy thing is, it's, what's going to get you there is not some movie or some TV special. It's this. This stuff right here. It's podcasts, yeah, because this is the only thing. There's never been a thing that lets people know really exactly who you are. It was always like you get five minutes of this asshole on the Tonight Show, and you oh, hope yeah, you kind of get a reasonable, yeah, yeah or Maybe radio. Maybe I get interviewed at the desk for three minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's your hope. Opie and Anthony or Howard Stern or one of those was the closest. You know, you sat down with those guys and shot the shit. And, you know, Howard gets deep into your personal life and your sexual life. And Opie and Anthony will let you rant about shit and go off. So that was like the best representation of who you are but this is even better than that because yeah. this is all you and it's for hours and hours of it and it's all free and it's all readily available well hi new fans if you're listening. what's that i said hi new fans if yeah hi new fans you, you uh -huh. fucking freaks what are you doing put your pants on dc was fun <laughs> that was a fun good DC show was awesome man these gigs have been so much more fun lately this past year uh, all the gigs we've been doing on the road have been really just really packed crowds that know exactly what we're doing, and they're all podcast fans. So you mentioned the podcast, they went crazy. I mentioned the flashlight on Friday night, and they went crazy. Ugh. Just just because they know that it's the sponsor, they went crazy. How do you feel being responsible for a, a number of loads <laughs> across the country? I think it's funny. The, well, I, I would I, say a myriad. I would use that here. <laughs> I, I, well, I like the, the flashlight being my sponsor because it's perfect, because it's embarrassing, it's yeah. silly, but it's functional, and there's no reason to be embarrassed. And it's like to pretend that you don't masturbate, I think, is just as stupid Everyone as pretends. this rubber vagina. Everybody pretends about yeah. everything. Stupid. It's like, why are you pretending? Because of censorship. Here's my, new, here's my new what I'm realizing. It's You know how when somebody breaks up, when you have a friend who breaks up with somebody, and immediately they're like, yeah, whatever, I'm fine, I don't care. And it's like, why doesn't somebody just say, like, oh, no, no, you're not. None of us ever are after we break up. It's well, okay to feel pain for a because, while. Because, you know, you say you're fine because you want to be fine. No. You know, and you are kind you of fine You don't want to show weakness in front of people. There's a little of that. There's a little of that, but it's also that you want... You know, you think you that if you put yourself okay. in the right state of mind, you know, maybe you will be okay. Yeah, I'll be okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. But, you know, you could be self-indulgent and go, oh, my life is oh, over. Yeah. I would way rather hear I'm fine and someone, like, stick their chin up. Even when you're t talking to exes, too, when they're like, how are you doing? You're, you're all right? I told somebody this once, and I was like, it's okay to be like, you know, it's still really hard, but, you know, I'll, I'll get better eventually. You don't have to be like, yeah, I don't care at all. Yeah, but people always feel like they have to say that. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? They always feel like they have to say that. Even if they're just trying to convince themselves. Is. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's because we're all weak bitches. That's what it is. Ugh, the TV they have on now is just so horrible. You know, a big part of what people do and who people are is projecting and pretending to be something that you're not. You know? Uh -huh. I mean, that's uh, the entire it's, art it's of way rap easier. music. It's way easier just to, like... Be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard to admit in reality it's hard to face reality you know yeah well like you get you can like you know how sometimes you almost trip over like a curb or something and you pretend mm. like you yeah maybe pretend like you don't i fell down on stage the other night fell I, on stage i fell yeah i fell down and what do you I, mean i slipped were you drunk no no i was doing this uh, a oh, crazy and thing and the stool fell over i was doing this thing about uh uh you know the, the weird contact rules uh -huh. with strip oh, clubs yeah. you know that, uh, that, I bit. Like that bit and uh i fell and then <laughs> you I felt yeah, like you fell to the fell. ground. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I, when I was down there, I said, am, "Am I supposed to do this like a boss?" And then I like put, you know, because like there's a bunch of internet memes of people falling down and putting their uh, their knuckles on their chin. Like I meant to do that, pretending you know? like you're fine. Yeah, but you know, it's 
it's just part of life, you know. <laughs> I love those fuck ups on stage. Yeah. Or if you smash yourself, your face with a with a microphone as you're pulling uh, it out of the out of the sand. Do you ever do that? Yeah, I've hurt my lip before. Yeah, it always hurts. You pull yeah. it. It's like hard right onto your lip, and it it it, it hurt, like shoves it between the teeth and the thing. Yeah. One time I was doing uh, the K Rock special. Yeah. They were at that April Fool special. It's Seven thousand people. Wow. It's a huge place. Is that the biggest show you've done? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Wow. And um, I was killing it. I, I was going crazy while I was on stage, and I whacked my hand down on the on the uh, uh-huh. stool. Somehow or another, I did this. I don't know what I was trying to accomplish, but I cracked my hand. And I went, "Ooh, I think I just broke my hand." And I was pretty convinced yeah. for the first minute or so that I broke my hand. But I had to just keep going through my material. My hand was bleeding. <laughs> so uh, I had to... Uh, bleeding? My knuckle was bleeding. Yeah, I smashed it, dude. I mean, I really cracked it hard. And it was some pretty intense pain. I was like, wow, that, that's that's an injury. That's not I, a... I'll, I'll punch the, 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 uh, the, the stool sometimes. But I usually sla- slap at it. That's a smart move. But the comedy store, they have those really padded... Um, stools. Cushiony, yeah. So everyone's all I'll really punch at it. Right. And that's fine. Right. But then you go somewhere else and you forget and you punch this thing and you're like, ow, my knuckle. This, yeah. It's always inflamed now. It's not good. I do it once every like <laughs> month or two. And yeah. I'm like, what an asshole I am. You can just turn that into a hammer fist. Oh, and absolutely. And you'll be fine every oh, yeah. time. I could do that totally. But yeah. fuck up for no reason whatsoever. The then shows you, are getting way bigger, man. Yeah, they're getting bigger for sure. It's a lot. It's a big difference between this and a couple years ago where we had to struggle to fill much smaller places can i mention where they offer you in where they offered you in uh vegas that one room yeah you can mention that sure but you're thinking of doing it we don't know yet but uh the pearl yeah and, uh, and i remember that's one of those things that like three years ago we're in vegas taking the, the elevator up and we saw lisa lampanelli's playing the pearl yeah, it's a giant room in the round almost yeah and we're like how the fuck that's gigantic yeah and now you're doing that yeah kind of kind of weird yeah, it wasn't that long ago either. Well, we've been doing the Mandalay Bay Theater, which is fucking huge too, which would have yeah. freaked me out. You know, that's uh, 1,800 people. That's why they show The Lion King. Yeah, yeah, we've done that a couple times now. Three, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they're trying to get us to do that again two. in October. Two, I think. Two? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great room. It's a lot of fun. It's way I really want to go there the next day and watch The Lion King. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah. Totally. The we night could before. probably, yeah, we could probably do that too. They invited us. They're like, whenever you want, just yeah. watch it. I think those things in Vegas, what I've heard, those big shows that are like two hundred fifty dollars a ticket or whatever, they don't ever really sell out. So those are the things they comp to like high rollers. Oh, really? They're like no skin off our teeth. Yeah, it's a two hundred fifty dollars ticket. We're not selling it anyway. So if you if you want, it's like rooms. They're like the rooms we already have. So who cares? Take it. Take the presidential suite. No one's in there. I've only been to see a couple other people's shows in Vegas. I wanted to see Artie Lang in Vegas once, and it was like half sold. Really? Yeah, that was a that was one of the one of the shows where I went to I was like wow like this this might be a trap you know like being on the Stern show and then going oh. on the road and doing stand up because I had never been to a show where I saw a guy get heckled more than Artie Lang in Vegas really? he was at at the Luxor oh fuck they wouldn't leave him alone man it was half full this is granted this was a few years ago I know his popularity kicked up this is when they first got like on the satellite attempts. radio it's pre-suicide attempts okay. You know, this is, I, I would say five or six years ago. And, um, you know, he had a good crowd in there. It was bigger than a, a place that I could do. So yeah. it was like, you know, a part of me was like, wow, Artie's doing well. He's doing these really big places. But the other part of me was like, oh, Christ, this fucking audience is horrible. Yeah. They were horrible, man. They were just drunk and dumb as fuck. And, the, and you know, and Artie, like, had to talk about the show. If he didn't talk about the show, he, could, he couldn't just talk about life or anything in the news. They were like, say so something about Robin. Yeah, what about Benji? You know, they would yell. They would yell shit out, and and the the and then the Reverend Al, uh, um, um, Reverend Al Bob Levy, oh. not Al Sharpton. That'd be great. Al he opened. Yeah, he opened. He did a tight five about his hair. You guys are all ruining America. Reverend Bob Levy, my pal from New York from the old days. He's a great guy, and Bob Levy has done every shithole on the East Coast, and he really knows how to handle hecklers. And so he yeah. fucking attacked and destroyed, and he he would do this bit where we'd close his act. By eating a girl's asshole, he would put like either like salad dressing on a girl's asshole. Oh, or, for real? Asshole oh yeah, yeah, yeah for real. Jeans, for inside. real. Oh yeah, he'd pull her pants down and eat her asshole. Jesus. Yeah, it was that was like his closing <laughs> bit. And that you, which, must be impossible to follow. Really hard to follow in a <laughs> hell room. Yeah, at a bar. <laughs> that's the exact type of place. Yeah, you can't believe he actually eats a girl's ass. You know. <sighs> wow. 
Yeah, but you know that's what you got. You got to do what you got to do to survive when you're doing those <laughs> East Coast hell gigs. You uh, know, E. coli, E. Schmola, get in there. You put yeah. salad dressing on it. Whatever. He put mayonnaise on it, whipped cream. <laughs> like tossing a salad. There's a lot of different stories of different things that he would put on it. <laughs> I would like to see that, but I would yeah. not want to go on afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so then, you know, uh, Artie's got to go on after that. And Nick DiPaolo went up that night, too. Nick DiPaolo killed, too. Yeah. And so Artie uh, has to go on after all this. And just, they were they were happy to see him, but they were just so hammered. And we were beside these guys. Joey Diaz was there with me. Yeah. We, were, we were beside these guys, and they were, they were heckling Artie, and they were saying... No, you're supposed to do this, man. They like it when you do this. They look. They were just <laughs> stupid and sloshed. Drunks are. You cannot communicate with them. Oh. Yeah, I've tried before. I've tried to really calmly say, like, no, it's okay. You're just drunk. But yeah. you know how you're too drunk sometimes. People get like that. Yeah, that's what you are. So maybe take a cab home. Well, you saw that guy, the drunk guy that I, that came up to the stage on Friday night. Oh my with, god! With yeah, I sandals. picked up to see him. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I was telling his friends like, where are you? Who are you with? And I looked over his friends. I go, you guys are gonna have to make some decisions in the future. You know that this is gonna happen over and over again. This fuck, you gotta, you gotta decide. Sometimes there's people in your life, and you gotta cut them loose, man. You gotta figure out when he to. Came all the way to the stage, and he's like, and you were like, okay, make this clear. What do you want to say? Remember what he asked you? Yeah, look at that. There's a UFC on the fucking plane. Oh wow, yeah, they're showing that is, us. I have never seen that before. We're riding on the plane, and they what? had UFC fighters working out. Oh, is it a commercial for the UFC oh, trainer? Oh, it's a commercial for a UFC video game. The X-Play. Oh, it's the trainer game. It's the UFC trainer with that uh, Xbox Connect. What was that, Brian Stan? You know what Xbox Connect is? No. Is that it's like the amazing. Wii? It's um, it, it sees your movements, and the video game character emulates your movements. Oh. Yeah, it's, and it just sees your body. Oh, but instead of being plugged in everything, you're not? Yeah, yeah. You don't have to have anything on. You're just moving, and as you move in front of this thing, yeah. I think it's kind of crude for right now. You know. So can't they do all the stuff body. they do on the Wii with that? Yeah, well, yeah. It's, uh, Xbox is it's, it's more, uh, it's, it's more comprehensive than the Wii because it's your whole body. Yeah. It's not just moving the handle around it's it literally sees your body and if you look at the video it's like mimicking Greg what Jackson. you're doing it's through you throw punches it throws punches see yeah oh wow yeah isn't that crazy oh, so showing people to, from your chair showing people to throw takedowns and leg kicks and stuff it's pretty nuts so just to lose weight is that the point well just to get in shape you know? yeah that's diego yeah it's fascinating man it's fascinating stuff the, the new technology for video games God, they see your movements yeah it, it sees your body frame and it's uh and it mimics your movements because remember when um when they did all that stuff for like Gollum, and they had to did you ever see the behind the scenes on that uh-huh and they had and to they wear had to, like, those put wires suits. all over yeah, yeah all over him so they get every angle that's way better than this though this is not does not move with the same type of accuracy yeah. that that does but this, this is, is a, a version of that though right but without the stuff yeah the same kind of thing it's motion this detection. is gonna get better i guess I did um, uh, the THQ game. You know, I'm in that game, um, the, the, the UFC video game. Uh-huh. And in the UFC video game, they had to take uh, uh, images of me and all the other people that are involved in the sport, Goldberg and Bruce Buffer. And <clears throat> you stand still, and they take a 360-degree photo of you. Oh, and really? And they add that into an animation program, and then it moves you around. We did that South by Southwest. They had like a... The, one of these booths it was a car commercial. All four of us like, would jump, and they would take the it would do the zoom around you. Uh-huh. Uh, it was just really cool. Oh wow! Those pictures. Yeah, this is amazing, man. It's, it's amazing. The, people in the, the air. kind of technology. I mean, you ever seen those 3D phones? Now a bunch of people had them at the show the other night. Oh, they were yeah. taking 3D pictures of us. You saw it? Yeah. What did it look like? Shit. Oh. It looks terrible. <laughs> it's new. Yeah, but it's new. Yeah, <laughs> it's on the way. You know. Just wait. Oh, Terry, Terry Fader. Is that his name, Terry Fader? I think so. God, yeah, I wonder if that's uh, good. How, that's uh, another thing I should see. Those shitty acts that I've made fun of, <laughs> but I'm like, I've never even seen it. I should probably just see it. Oh, it's torturous. I didn't mind Jeff Dunham. Oh, when he's I was good. little, I watched that, and I was like, that guy made me laugh. Peanut made me laugh. Yeah, he's when a I was smart little, guy. I've heard him on Opie and Anthony. He's a yeah. very smart guy. He's interesting. You know, he makes his own dolls and makes his own... Um, he makes them all? Yeah, with a 3D them? printer. He makes them with a 3D printer. What do you mean? Well, he's got a 3D printer that makes things out of plastic. You know, they have printers now that print in three dimensions. Instead of just an image, they can actually print an object. 
Really? Yeah, well, it's the future of materialism, really, because you're going to be able to have the components for things, and what you're going to buy is you're going to buy the, um, um, the schematics for things. And, you know, obviously people are going to buy them or download them from Wait, so torrent sites, and yeah. you're going to be able to just steal the schematics for things, and all you're going to need is the raw materials. Like, think of certain plastic things. Like, so how about a plastic garden shovel? Okay, let's say a shovel. Sure. How hard is it to make a plastic garden shovel if you actually have something that can print out plastic into any form you want? It's a pretty simple form. And well, so you'll it comes be able out of the to, printer and, yeah. like... You'll be able to get, say if you buy uh, a printer, you'll be able to get the schematics for a plastic garden shovel, and you'll be able to enter them into the computer, and then it will it'll run, the machine runs in layers, and <clears throat> there's a bunch of different ways to do it. One of them is a powder, and uh, the powder, they add like a, a quickening agent to it, and it hardens, and the other what? one is, <clears throat> wow. the other one is a spool of lime. That's very similar to, um, like, fishing line, uh-huh. and it's heated at about 500 degrees, and as it's heated, it wow. melts and settles into the other layers of lines. So as you're putting it down, it becomes soft, and then the other one lays on top of it, and that becomes soft, and it becomes one solid piece. Wow. That's amazing, really. Jesus. Wow, I never even considered that. Yeah. done. You get nervous for the UFCs at all? <laughs> You don't care at all. Do you feel any pressure? I care. No, I definitely feel. I no, mean, care is the wrong I, word. I, yeah. I get amped up. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't feel nervous. I don't feel like, oh boy, this is it. A million plus people are watching. Holy shit! I I always just think about the task. I'm so comfortable doing it. You've done it so many so times. Long. Yeah. You get nervous on stage at all? No, I get amped up. When you take your special that time yes. in Columbus, you got nervous. I got nervous then. Yeah, the first set, I got nervous. I looked. I saw you pacing beforehand. I was like, Yeah, I don't normally see you like this. I it was, was also wondering. to get Eddie Bravo to stop telling me stories. <laughs> it, was, it was so strange. He was telling me stories like right before I was going on stage. Really? You know, sometimes people forget you're you're that about to do a something. Moment. Yeah, it's gonna freak you out. You know, but that that was the last time I've actually been nervous. But I was only nervous for the first show. Yeah, the second show, you rocked it. Yeah, hard. once I had it out in the can, the sec- second show was just like any normal show. I was like, oh, great. This is. Because once I knew I had it in the can, I was like, okay, I- now I can relax. And then the second show was just a show. Yeah. And the first show was only a first show up until the QA. Once I got to the QA, the QA was super relaxed. Super re- relaxed? Yeah, yeah, it was fine, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, that once you're fun. doing any sort of task for a while, yeah. I try to explain it to the comics when they ask me, like, how to not get nervous. Normally, when people give me advice, I'm like, they ask for advice. I mean, I'm like, you got to find out. Like, you, I can't tell you. Yeah, you got to figure gotta it out. You got to do it, and you got to get good at it. And, you know, you're going to be yeah. nervous if the result, at oftentimes, is horrendous. Yeah. If you go on stage and you bomb and people hate you, yeah, that sucks. And you're going to be nervous. But that you that's have to happen. keep doing it yeah. until you get better at that yeah. situation. And that's like, the hardest part about being a beginner is you're going to bomb a lot, man. Think, Think about that. how many times you bombed early in your comedy career where it was yeah. devastating to your psyche. Oh. Terrible. I wanted to. I wanted to have sex with this girl Kim, my my friend Stephen Trace's friend, and we. It was one of those where you both like each other and you both know it, right. but it just hasn't worked out yet. She has a boyfriend, I have a girlfriend, whatever it is, and then one time she didn't, and she came to see me at some place on Melrose or Beverly. Brett Ernst is performing, and Renazis is performing, and she was there, and I bombed so hard, Ooh. and I had to stay. At the, to leave, you had to walk through the showroom, through where everybody was, and I sat. I think I went on early, and I sat there through the whole show. In the back, because I didn't want to face anybody. I let them all leave. Ugh. They didn't want to see her, and we never had sex. Uh. Now she has kids, and she's married. Whoa. It's done forever. Wow. We never did it. I say you got off light. <laughs> she was cool. We're still friends. <laughs> um, uh, there's something yeah. you told me once, that I remember this. When, when, when I, was, uh, I, I was fucking with these, these, all these Italians came in, and they sat in the side of the comedy store, you know, all the booths are. Yeah. And as soon as they walked in with their fucking backwards hats... I could just tell, like, oh, these are just guidos. Fuck you. I could just tell immediately. And the first thing they said, they were like, they were sat there and they're like, oh, yeah. Just something like a little douchey, and I just went off on them. And I lost the crowd. They all thought it was just like uncalled for. And you said later, you're like, you're like, you know, because I was like, what, what is it? I went off and everybody turned on me. And you're like, you're very sensitive because you're a comic, like we all are. And you can immediately tell they're all douchey. The crowd is slower. You got to let them. Let the crowd figure out their douchey first. Then you can attack them. Yeah, you got to give them rope. Let them hang themselves. Yeah, that's yeah. what you said. Give them rope. And then I remember taking like a year before I could actually figure out how to do that in practice. 
and then knowing and letting somebody hang themselves over and over again and finally just going like shut up and everyone cheers and you're like oh yeah oh i have you on my side against these people in a movie when the hero eats meets the enemy the hero never kills the enemy right away because you got to see drama oh, yeah. play out something's going to happen so yeah it's got to be a reason to kill the enemy you can't say you know well this guy's a bad guy and he's the good guy so he's going to get him they shoot somebody's dead oh yeah it's a two minute movie you can't and you can't mm. kill the enemy unless you're in or someone else in complete danger right now they have to yeah. be picking up their gun at the end you have to first of all have the audience on your side so you have to say something funny first you have to <laughs> you have to get the audience convinced that you have some entertainment for them and that these douchebags are keeping it from the yeah. audience with their selfishness and by the way it's the same thing spider-man does before he kills an enemy really yeah i mean he makes some quip some joke Oh. But go ahead, keep going. Well, that's what you <laughs> I like do. that. And then, you know, you got to build it up so drama's taking place where the audience doesn't know what the hell's going to happen. You know, yeah. the, these people are heckling and the comic, is the comic flustered? Is the comic upset? How's the comic going to deal with this? You know, and you got to be kind at first. And then, you know, it's like Dalton and Roadhouse. You got to be nice yeah. <laughs> till it's time to not be nice. Is that a saying? Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the worst movies ever. That sounds like a rough draft. <clears throat> oh, it's a perfect. A line. That it's sounds like a real line. Those are the cocaine days where they made movies. They're all coked up. <laughs> they made ridiculous movies that were real movies. Uh, <laughs> you so know? bad. That's a stupid <clears throat> yeah. line. Oh, it's the best. Oh, that's not as bad as when she's stitching them up in a in the hospital. This really hot nurse yeah. is stitching up Patrick Swayze. Yeah, and uh, he goes, "Pain don't hurt." He said, pain don't hurt. Pain don't hurt. Pain don't hurt, yeah. I haven't seen the movie in a long time. Oh, it's awesome. He's a philosopher slash cigarette smoking badass. Really? Yeah, he's cool in every way with perfect hair. Have you ever seen um, Point Break? Have you ever seen Point Break Live? I've seen, Live? What yeah. do you mean? These guys, are. it's called Point Break Live. I think they do it on the road now, but they did it in like, I think in Los Feliz or, or, or downtown or something in LA for like a few years. They reenact Point Break. Oh, no. And they play all the roles except... Um, Keanu Reeves who they pick out from the audience <laughs> and they have like, Keanu Reeves off at the beginning of it and then they um, then they uh, all, pretty much I think all his lines are whoa or whatever and they keep calling on him it's supposed to be amazing oh that's and hilarious and so much fun that sounds tough. and they do it all in like <clears throat> I don't know how long it takes to reenact it and everybody's drunk I went to see Rocky Horror Picture Show once Recently or a long no, time ago? No, a long it's all in college. time ago. It's still rocking though. There's still places that have it. They're I was still amazed it. by it. When I went in college, I was like, "Wait, what are these people do? They all know the lines." They're dressed like, what? up. There's people a separate script up. for them to say along with it. Yeah, it's a party. And the crazy thing is, you know, some of them have seen it 50 times. Yeah. some of them have seen it 100 times. It's crazy, and it's they just the, keep going. It's the nerds saying like, "We're not going to be left out." We have social things too. It's also, you know, they they be, they it becomes a thing for them to do. They they obsess on it, and I, I don't I don't understand it. You know, I mean, I went to see Star Wars a gang of times when I was a kid. Yeah. When I was a little kid going to see That's, Star Wars. You can Wars. see movies more than once. Yeah, you're you can supposed see it seven to. times. Well, you was no v- VHSs back then. You had to go see movies in the movie. Oh theater. yeah, and that was your only chance. Yeah, can you yeah. imagine now if I see a movie twice in the theater? That's something I'm telling everybody about. Yeah, I saw Avatar three times. Really? Yeah, it was, I fucking loved Avatar. That was a great movie. I saw it once with Brian. We were so high that we like didn't. We bought our ticket like an hour ahead of time at Universal, and they were like, "Let's wander around while we're high," and we're like, "Let's not wander too far." <laughs> so we stayed scared. really close to the theater. Scared. <laughs> yeah. Walk around in circles, losing track of time. Oh, the movie's starting. Nope, it's only been a minute. Okay, we're still good. <laughs> yeah, that that was. Uh, that was a fun movie. That was that's my kind of movie. I like to see Avatar. big escape movies. Whenever people know? tell me about the problems with that movie, I'm always you know like plot wise, I'm always like, yeah, you're right. Didn't notice at the time, but you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, that should have annoyed me. Of course, it's a movie. It they had to wrap so it up pretty. in 90 minutes. If you want to have a movie that's completely realistic and you know and and, and, and doesn't conform to any of the, the standards of films, yeah. it either might suck, might leave you hanging, or it might last six hours. You know, yeah. I'm not willing to have either bed, one of those. You ever see in the bedroom? Happen. What's that? You ever see in the bedroom? In the bedroom. What is that? It's um, it's uh, it's not like a romantic movie. It's um, it's really sad. It had t- not T. The only who's the girl from My Cousin Vinny? I don't know. She's a chick. She dated George Costanza in, in Seinfeld for a while. I never really watched Seinfeld. You didn't see My Cousin Vinny? No. Oh, Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei. Yeah, okay. she was in it. A bunch of people, but it was about somebody's son dying. Okay. I remember seeing that the same year that A Beautiful Mind won the Oscar and mm. getting mad. But, like, wait, that other movie was actually a good movie. 
helped. It didn't bother me in any way. Beautiful Mind bothered you? No, no. Beautiful Mind. Not a, oh, yeah, it did. Totally. Why did it bother you? Well, because the final... You see that movie? Yeah. You know how he wins this Nobel Prize and he overcomes everything and yes. everyone claps? He won the Nobel Prize for something he did when he was a freshman. When he was sane. So all that craziness and overcoming that didn't help him win the Nobel Prize. Everyone clapping at the end and standing up when there's a score. It made me cry, but there was nothing there. He didn't overcome. Well, he did because he was socially uh, competent again. He was able to communicate with people. He was able to say thank you. Yeah, it's a bit, that's an interesting thing about madness. You know, the idea of madness. I, I like that movie because, first of all, it's based on a true story. And uh-huh. as much of it is horseshit. Yeah, the stuff they changed is his wife left him immediately when she went crazy. Oh, did she? Yeah, she in didn't real stick life? by him in any way. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Oh. Not Hollywood enough. Let's change that because it's too depressing. That bitch. Yeah. Well, that's more realistic. Yeah, I, I find madness and, and, and great skill to be very close closely related you know uh-huh. great skill and 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 and, and great mean? awareness people that are really genius brilliant people are almost always really close to being crazy you know i mean we've seen it in comics and actors and musicians and writers oh, yeah. and you know people who are like you know people who are capable of like really amazing things and, and really i have a theory that you can't tell how crazy they are until they stop being as famous because you forgive them for instance, case in point, clock around your neck, Flavor Flav. When he was a musician actually putting stuff out, you're like, oh, whatever. But now you're like, oh, you're like a crack addict. Right. You're like, you're beyond crazy. Same thing with his girlfriend, who you thought, oh, normal. Now you're like, oh, you're just some dumb blonde. His girlfriend? The girlfriend on that show when he had that reality show. I that never saw that tall show. tall blonde girl that was <clears> in like... I never saw that Whatever. show, but I thought he was always the comic relief on that band. From NWA. Yeah, it was no uh, Public Enemy, but That's it was what I meant. it was definitely uh, exaggerated. <laughs> I don't know. Once Public Enemy was sort of out of the spotlight as a band, and he was sort of in the spotlight as a freak show. But yeah. I mean, I think he was kind of forced into that role too to make a living, you know. Oh. Ah, our initial approach, bitches. So bright. There it is. We look down. It got cold at DC. Yeah, it was, it was a little October chilly. October 1st, and it was chilly. Well, that's what happens in gone. October in the East Coast, fella. You know, we don't realize it. We're, we're in the land of no weather. It's so great. Yeah. I saw all those pictures. Last year was a really bad blizzard year for the was Midwest. It? Yeah. The blankets. I see these pictures of blankets of white. I'm like, yeah, we had a low of 52. Yeah. I, it's just so much more pleasant. Well. As an experience. When in the win- my winter's my favorite time of, in L.A. because well, it rains. Oh. I right like when it there. rains and everything gets green, man. I and think clear. that's awesome. Yeah. It's the only time right after it rains, you can see from the comic store all the way downtown. Yeah. Because the smog is all gone. And you can see the mountains. You know, yeah. you can see the San Gabriel Mountains where Big Bear is and everything like that. Really? You can see that from my house. It's crazy. Really? You see the snow on them in the winter. Yeah, it's gorgeous. We're, we're you know, breathing shit air all the time. It's, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to move to Colorado in the first place. I, I think ultimately that shit's got to fuck with you. You know, a little it's bit dirty, of cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. Look. You could smoke a half a cigarette a day and probably be okay. You're fine, but yeah. But wouldn't you be better if you didn't smoke a half a cigarette a day? Wouldn't you be healthier? That's how I always feel about L.A.'s air. I mean, that's why I live as far out as I do. Have you ever heard the population explosion and the population bomb? What is it, a book? There are two books. The population bomb was written by these um, scientists. I don't know what kind. Something to do with populations. Uh, him and his wife. Um, about the coming problem of population. Because it's growing geometrically instead of whatever the other one is that I remember you mean when I was exponentially? Right, exponentially instead of geometrically um, and I still probably got the terms wrong but they were like it's going to be a major problem very soon and then 30 years later they wrote it called the explosion it's like it's out of control but their theory was like they said things like let's say you took a drop of motor oil and put it in a creek once a day that creek could evaporate that motor oil and you could do it till the end of time it would never overwhelm the creek but if you drop dump barrels in there for a few days that creek is done forever. Mm. Mm. Even though it'd be the same amount, but just like in LA, where it's like it's what you're saying, pretty much like it's too much smog. You know, McKenna, like your body a, can deal with half a cigarette. McKenna, McKenna had a mushroom trip once, yeah. where he said Sounds he awesome. asked the mushrooms, "How how can we fix humanity?" And the mushroom said, "Every couple should only reproduce once. Every couple should only have one child." Really? Yeah. When was that? What year was that? Well, he had it. The trip was probably in the what 80s because he was talking about it in the 90s. 
Um, but that was what the mushrooms told them. That I mean, really, it's brilliant if you think about it. It really, it really is the solution to humanity. A big part of our problems is overpopulation, yeah. and it would dwindle, cut everything back fifty percent without any need for a war or a nuclear explosion or a meteor to do it. You know, a disease. Yeah, it's but just nature's way of keeping population down. No one's going to do that in third world countries. No one's going to do no. that in first world countries. People are selfish. They yeah. want what they want. And, you know, they're sort of trying to implement something like that in China. Well, you know, the major to taxes to, to get one baby per family? Yeah, well, you're only allowed to have one child in, yeah. chi- in China. You know, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to cut their population back. And if you do engineer it that way, over the course of, you know, say, uh, a couple of generations, once old people die off, yeah. things will be more manageable. I mean, well, if really you have a field, smart. this is what they said in that book, too, or but one of the two books. If you have a field, um, and the only reason I know about these books, by the way, is I had a report due, I think, in, like, seventh grade, and I copied it from a uh, across-the-street neighbor. He just gave me his, and he did it on that book. <laughs> so then I later read the sequel <laughs> and actually wrote a report my own. I copied it exactly. Mrs. Scales didn't know the difference at all. Oh, that's funny. It was three years later. You can't do that anymore because now no. people put things online uh-huh. and they could just do a plagiarism I had a, program. I had a and friend, John Wilbur. He's my brother-in-law's brother, and he copied straight from Cliff Notes some book. And the teacher's like, "You, you copied this. You plagiarized." And he's like, "No, I didn't." And she goes, "Look, this whole paragraph is word for word." And he uh-huh. goes, "Nope." wasn't me and she was like oh you're such an and she just forgot about it <laughs> wow <that's laughs> fucking funny. bratty kid fine well you know there's all sorts of programs now to see if someone's been plagiarizing your blogs i've had oh, people really? plagiarize my blogs oh, yeah. word for word really yeah completely and entirely like students and stuff yeah <laughs> why students that? and people that just write shitty websites oh. you, know, if, uh, you know there's a lot of people that have like sucks. shitty comedy variety websites and yeah. something will happen in the news and i'll write a whole blog about it and they'll take literally everything that I wrote that's funny and put it in their blog and then you catch them I've caught a bunch of people doing that really well that's it's super common but you know it's also people that have you know gone through high school stealing gone through college plagiarizing oh, yeah. and they haven't gotten caught and so they think they're smart it's also like in high school I sort of understand it maybe it's only because I did it so much but it's like hey I don't care I don't want credit for this I just right. want to get the report done right you just want to get through it I don't want anybody to know I wrote yeah. this stuff it's just you're not Whatever. trying to pretend that you're you're a brilliant writer. Yeah. You're just trying to I'm not trying do to the work. I'm yeah. just trying to get a B. Yeah. They had um they had but they said in that book too that they said if you have if I work a field, I can get let's say twenty percent fielded out of the field, you know. If I ask you to help me, I can get forty or fifty percent. And if I ask a third person I get eighty percent. At some point, adding another person stops giving another full person's growth. You know what I mean? So if we get 10 people working if we had an 11th we could only go up like 1-2% more yeah there's that old expression one boy whole boy two boy half boy three boys yeah. no boy at all at some point population overwhelms the ability to produce food for its people well especially since most people aren't producing food I mean yeah. with LA is a population of what 20 million people with the outlying areas Something like how that. many of those people are actually growing food well I made pickles um, last week, so oh, there you go. Part of the Did solution. you grow the pickles? Uh, that's a negative. No. So think about how many people that need food. Twenty million people need food every single day, and none of them none are growing grow anything up. other than weed. <laughs> it's the only the only thing that's getting grown. It's true. Everyone's going to weed. You go over to dudes' houses, dude. I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm yeah, growing. They they're growing. The they say they're growing, but they don't say they're growing tomatoes. <laughs> When a guy tells you he's a grower, you know, the fuck, he's not, he doesn't have celery in his yard. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're absolutely right. It's totally true. I love, I'm amazed at how great horticulturalists those potheads are. Yeah, it's amazing. They scientific about it. What's also amazing is how few people eat vegetables. You yeah. Because we don't, if everybody ate like I eat, you know, we would need a, a lot more goddamn farmers. We would need vegetables everywhere. There would no be a shortage of vegetables everywhere. But whenever I go to the grocery store, there's plenty of vegetables, and nobody's even touching them. No. You go near them, there's nowhere, no one anywhere near I them. I don't even walk in that aisle. The ice cream aisle's packed with people. People are getting milk, and they're getting I sometimes meat. grab one pepper to sneak into my salad. Really? Because they don't have hot peppers there, so I just have to uh, grab one and throw it in there. Well, I have this uh, kale, steel. kale uh, drink that I drink every morning. It's a, a smoothie. Yeah. It doesn't taste very good. It tastes okay. It's it's not intolerable. It, do you nickname it Kale Shunnin? Kale Shunnin? Yeah. No. Oh. no. Sunnin? Whatever. Horrible, horrible joke. Chale, Go ahead. Chale. Chale Sunnin. 
Is that's his name, right? Chael. Yeah, Chael. No, you can't say. You got me confused. <laughs> you heard it wrong. You're like, wait, no, I don't know. All right, I'm here with Kale Sonnen. My name's Chael Joe. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, sorry, I have a smoothie sir. drink I make called Kale Sonnen, so yeah. you see my mistake. Anyway, tell us about your victory. I drink this uh, kale shake every morning, and it's uh, really healthy for you. It's super delicious, and it makes me feel very good when Most I, when I do it on a regular basis. What's that? Most people don't have kale shake makers. Well, it's just a blender. Oh. It just smashes everything up into like a smoothie. It's a super potent blender. Is it good? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's really good for you, but I was thinking, man, if everybody did that, how many fucking vegetables would you we drink need? That palm stuff? Huh? You ever drink that palm stuff? Palm's good, yeah. Oh, my God. I drink good it, stuff. and I'm like, energy. Yeah, I've got such a deficit of nutrients. Yeah, you do. So when I when I drink it, I'm like, this is way better for me than candy. Well, you should juice. You know, juicing uh, fr- fruit and vegetable juice, yeah. super healthy for you and really easy to do. I would have to get a juicer. You got to clean it though, you fucking uh, dirty bastard. Yeah, you're a dirty bastard. My next place, I'm I'm getting a dishwasher. Yeah, my next place, I'm gonna clean. <laughs> my next <place>. one day. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say that. I've been the same place for nine years. But I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to get a next place. Yeah. <laughs> like, relax. Of you, uh, I know for a while you were thinking about buying in LA. Oh, uh, no Are more. You, still, you give up on that? Uh, not completely, but. Oh, uh, they're telling us to put away electronics. Does that include podcasting equipment? It probably doesn't include podcasting equipment. No. Um, Are you, you giving up on buying in LA? Um, not completely, but like for now, yeah. It's because the market is the market so is good still right not got any better. Well, they're so it's so good for buying now because oh, yeah. there's so many short sales. So many people but are losing also their said price. They're keeping the the interest rates even till 2013. This is the first time they've actually set a date. Wow! Like we're not. They say foreseeable future for a while, but now they've said till 2013. My friend Avi said three years ago when the recession was just starting, he was like, "Trust me." At worst, people are saying mid 2011 before the housing market even comes out. And everyone's like, that's ridiculous. Still getting worse. Yeah. It's 2011 now. Well, there's a lot of people that believe that it's only part of the problem because the commercial real estate uh, b- problem hasn't really developed to the worst point. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of commercial real estate available. Like, uh, you you were telling me that you went and looked at an office space. You got an office oh, yeah. space, right? Look I, how they, easy and it they is. they wanted 500. I was like, I have, my budget is 350. They're like, well, we can do 450. I'm like, no, no, no. My budget, I'm Jewish. I'm not going to sway for my budget. I know what a budget means. And it's 350. I totally understand if you can't rent this to me. But that's my maximum. I and think they're, like, they're going right, to arrest us if we don't shut this off. Let's put it on so pause. So here comes until, a nice lady. Uh, until we land. All right. Well, this is it, folks. Yeah, why not? This is the end of our podcast. Thanks, thanks for coming. Yeah, we had a we good time. About this is fun. And How long did we talk for? 15 minutes and 40 Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, you have anything to promote? No. Nope. In case anybody hears us. Watch, listen to my podcast. Go, uh, it's the Joe Rogan Experience. Experience. It's on yeah. iTunes. It's on JoeRogan.net. You can find all of the old ones there and all the... And come to our shows. All right. That's it. Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, number 27. Uh, plane ride? No. Censorship. Is that what I'm calling this? Censorship. In the books. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, thank you, Joe Rogan, for talking to me. That was fun. Thank you also for bringing me with you to uh, to Washington, D.C. That show was fun, and, uh, and uh, we always have fun trips together. Um, my storyteller show is a few stand-up things. My storyteller show is uh, called This Is Not Happening Presents Scary Stories. It's this Thursday, October 20th. Uh, Paul Shear from The League is doing it. Mike Bridenstine, Adam Hammer, the Walsh Brothers. We've heard their story, and it's really fucking funny. Uh, Matt Bronger from Mad TV and... I don't know. They're all from just fucking comedy and, and stuff. They're all funny. It's one of my favorite shows of, of the month. Uh, I do it about once a month, and it's one of my favorite shows. It's $5. It's a uh, Melrose Improv. Um, it's just fun, so come on out. Uh, the 21st and 22nd, I'm in La Jolla at the San Diego Comedy Store um, with Freddie Lockhart from the Death Squad podcast called What's Good and, um, and one of my podcasts, number whatever. I don't remember, but he's on there. And, um, and Tony Hinchcliffe, who I did Shroom Fest with. It's all coming together, isn't it, San Diego, at the La Jolla Comedy Store, the 21st and 22nd. Go to thecomedystore.com for tickets to that. Um, November 11th, uh, I said this last time, but the improv is, I'm headlining the Melrose Improv. Um, I'm doing a longer set, so please come out to that. That's also improv.com. And what else? Oh, I'm taping my CD, my first... And probably only CD I'm taping uh, at Edmonton, Canada, Edmonton, Alberta, uh, the comic strip, October 26th through the 30th, Halloween week, but not on Halloween. So go to thecomicstrip.ca for tickets to that. Uh, it should be really fun. I'm really excited. 
to finally make something on tape. And um, that's it, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please subscribe uh, so you get these all the time. But so far, so good. Every Monday, it's happening, huh? I'm surprising even myself. That's it. Ari Shapiro, Skeptic Tank number 27. Censorship. Hasta la vista.